ish. I don't remember what I put. 24. So, uh, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, whom she was engaged, was a righteous man, and he did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, don't be afraid. Now, we're going to see that phrase a lot in this Christmas story. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> he said, the angel says, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you will name him Jesus. For he will save the, his people from their sins. And this all, occur, all occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophets. When I missed 23. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as, as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born and Joseph named him Jesus. So what do we know about Joseph? All right. As as we go through Scripture, we know that he was a carpenter, right? Remember that part of the story. Joseph was a carpenter. He taught Jesus how to be a carpenter. Um, in this passage, it says he was a righteous and faithful man. What does that mean? That means that Joseph was a good Jewish man. He grew up Jewish, and he kept the he kept the the. Um, the sacrificial laws and that kind of thing. He went to, to, the, to the synagogue and things like that, and he, he knew who God was. He was a godly man. And he knew the, the law, and, and he was a descendant of David, right? That's an important thing because we know that Jesus, through the Old Testament, they said he will be a descendant of David, and he was Mary's husband, right? We know that, and he was Jesus' earthly father, right? But let's look at this. We have... Uh, <clears throat> let's look at what Joseph is not for a minute. All right, so when Joseph considered this all right so as he had this dream and the angel of the lord appeared to him and he said J son of david J joseph son of david an angel said do not be afraid to take mary your wife so <clears throat> in this scripture we know that he's a descendant of david and he is not supposed to be afraid to take mary as his wife okay so why would he be afraid to take Mary as his wife at this point? Because she was pregnant. Now, let's talk about the culture of the first century and the Jewish culture a little bit. So, <clears throat> their marriage culture is quite a bit different than what we have. So we need to understand that because <clears throat> Joseph and Mary, they were engaged and in this engagement, it is more of like a formal contract, all right? So Mary was probably somewhere around 13, 14, 15, 16 at this point, all right? And this is a legal obligation that Joseph has with Mary and her father and her family that they are going to be married. So this is the engagement. And they are considered married, but they cannot consummate the marriage until the public ceremony and this public ceremony is a big deal it's a big feast and it can last up to seven days and this is a big deal this is a huge deal in the community for them to have this ceremony and be completely married and then they go and they consummate their marriage all right so at this point where when the angel is talking to them the angel says, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. All right? 
So Joseph, he is looking at this, and he is a righteous man. He knows the word of God, and he knows that if people see that Mary is pregnant, and they haven't had this wedding ceremony yet, that she has probably done something that she ought not to do. All right, are you following me? And Joseph, being a faithful and righteous man and a compassionate man, we can see that, that Joseph is compassionate because he is trying to figure out how to, how to make this right without hurting Mary. So he is thinking he is going to divorce her, which he had every right to do because she was pregnant by someone else, and send her away. And he would have to divorce her and send her away so that she wasn't publicly humiliated by being pregnant and not married. <clears throat> if that were to happen, she would be shunned by the Jewish community. She would probably be considered like a prostitute. She would probably have a very difficult life raising this child on her own. Are you following me? So Joseph, being the compassionate man that he is, sees this and he wants to protect Mary. He wants to protect her reputation. Back in Deuteronomy, he has every right to bring Mary before the religious council and present his grievance, I guess you could say, present his case before the religious council, and you know what the punishment was? They would have stoned Mary. Mary would have been killed. So when we look at Joseph and we think, yeah, he's a carpenter, he's faithful, he's righteous, but he's very compassionate. He's very compassionate. And I think that <clears throat> that is one of the reasons that God chose Joseph as Jesus' earthly father. That's just me. But I think that is a characteristic that God looked at and said, yes, Joseph. But Joseph, he has this dream, and the angel says, what? Very first thing the angel says, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. All right? And as we see Joseph, what did Joseph do? He obeyed, right? He obeyed. He obeyed to the point that he didn't question anymore, right? He, he, oh, I'm way past that. He didn't question. So <clears throat> when Joseph woke up, what did he do? He did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took Mary as his wife. Did Joseph know what all that involved at the time? No, there's no way that he knew what was going to be involved. He knew, <coughs> he knew that God has, has told him through an angel, take Mary as your wife. And he woke up from the dream, and he didn't, he didn't take time going back and forth in his head thinking okay well i know the angel said this but i really i don't know i know what what it was going to look like i he didn't do that he 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 thought god has told me to do this and i am going to do it is that hard to do i think that's hard to do at times it's hard for me to do at times i think it's hard for all of us but joseph he, even though he didn't understand completely, he obeyed immediately. All right? Even though he didn't understand it completely, he obeyed completely. Um, <clears throat> now, we don't have a lot of details. He didn't have much detail about what was going to happen. But let me tell you what happened. He took Mary as his wife. He didn't send her away. And then all of a sudden, he has this 100-ish mile journey that he has to take. 
He has to go from um, Nazareth to Bethlehem. This is the city of David, right? He's an ancestor. He's, he's along the line of David. And there's a census. And Joseph has to take his pregnant wife to Bethlehem, a hundred-ish miles, <clears throat> on foot, on a donkey, on a horse. I don't know. But, ladies, can you imagine going 100 miles when you're that pregnant? Either walking or on a donkey? Everybody's, no way. So, think about... I'm going to get in trouble. Think about this. Here, Joseph is walking the donkey along. Mary's in the back seat. She's very pregnant. And they're walking a hundred miles. What's the conversation going on? Not much. You think Mary's comfortable? No. You think she's letting Joseph know that? Guys, yep. Uh, guys are going, yep, yep. <clears throat> so, without knowing completely what was in store, Joseph obeyed, and he take he takes G he takes Mary to Bethlehem. Did he know that Mary was going to give birth in a barn? You think that was easy for him? You think that was a little stressful? I know it would have been stressful for me. My first child was born without a doctor in the room. That was stressful. She came out and she was doing gymnastics and she's still doing gymnastics. <laughs> He didn't know that was going to happen. He was going to be in a barn with animals and uh, and have a manger that that his son will lay in. Did he know that King Herod was going to decree that all the little boys the age of two and under would be killed? You think that was stressful? But yet he obeyed. He had to pack up his family, and they escaped to Egypt? Do you think that was easy? <laughs> but yet he obeyed? And think about this. The weight of raising the Son of God. Think about that. Joseph was chosen by God to raise his son. That's pretty heavy, right? That's a that's a pretty heavy burden. I don't I would be pretty stressed about that. But you know what? Joseph obeyed. Even though it was hard, he obeyed. Joseph raised Jesus as a good Jewish boy. We see that um, as uh, as we see Joseph raising Jesus. We don't have a lot of information about Jesus' early childhood, but I'll guarantee you that Joseph probably did some dirty diapers. And I guarantee you, because of his compassion, he held that little baby in his arms and I'll bet you that he looked into that baby's eyes with that love that only a father can have for his son and he raised Jesus to be a good man he taught him how to be a carpenter he taught him how to interact with people he taught him to have compassion. And we, we kind of lose track of Joseph in this biblical narrative. Um, the last place that we see Joseph is when Jesus was 12 years old. Do you know where that was? The temple, right? Now, I have, I've said the idea of the weight of raising Jesus, God's son, Think about that day at the temple when he was 12. Mary and Joseph are headed back home. 
they lost the Son of God. All right? Seriously. How, how do you think Joseph felt when they realized that Joseph thought he was with Mary, Mary thought he was with Joseph, and here they've gone a day without Jesus, headed home? Do you think that, oh, well, whatever. I think Joseph <clears throat> probably, you know that pain in your chest when you realize something bad has just really happened? I don't know if you've ever left children places. I may or may not have. <laughs> I know what it feels like. It's scary. And here Joseph has left the Son of God at the temple, and they have to go back and find him. And that's the last reference that we have to Joseph. <clears throat> we don't know what happened. We assumed that Joseph probably passed away sometime after Jesus was 12 years old. And there's some inklings that we get <coughs> of that. So when a father passes away, it's up to the oldest son to take care of the mother. Okay, it's kind of the, it's this son, it's his responsibility to take care of the family at that point. And Jesus, he didn't really leave until he was about 30. And that's when he started his, his ministry. And that would make sense if Mary was widowed and Jesus was taking care of her. All right? That's kind of a tradition in the Jewish culture. And then when Jesus is hanging on that cross, what does he say? John take care of my mom so Joseph somewhere after the age of, of 12 when Jesus was 12 he disappears from the picture um, assuming that he probably passed all right as we look at this and we start talking about application the application is obedience is our responsibility. The outcome is God's. Okay? The obedience is our responsibility. The outcome is God's. Joseph, he obeyed. He he <clears throat> the angel said, Don't be afraid, take Mary as your wife, and he obeys immediately. Was he in charge of the outcome? Could he have known the outcome? No. But he knew that God was in control. And the outcome is in God's hands. So when we look at this, and we'll get into this in just a second. When we look at this, and we, re we reflect on our life and our obedience to God, one small act of obedience from us can have giant outcomes, God-sized outcomes. But when God says to do it, we need to do it. Because only God knows what the outcome is going to be, and He controls the outcome. Does that make sense? So one small act on our part can have huge effects on somebody else's life. Have you ever heard of the butterfly effect? Yep, there's another name for it. I don't remember what that is either. But the, the idea is a butterfly in Indonesia flaps its wings and, and on the Pacific coast there's a hurricane or something. All right, that's the idea of the butterfly effect. I don't believe that. But take that in reference to one small act of obedience on our part to God that can happen in our life or somebody else's life a giant outcome maybe one small act of obedience on our part somebody comes to know Jesus and that's a life-changing event right that's an eternal life-changing event 
because of one small obedient act on our part. Does that make sense? Are you following me? The Holy Spirit is in control. He, he is working through the things that God is telling us to do, and he is in control. One small act on our part plants a seed in this person, and the Holy Spirit takes over, and God is in control of the outcome. Right? So as Joseph is there, and he, he is following what God has told him, this is what the angel said. For the child within her was conceived of the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from his sins. That makes more sense. From their sins. <clears throat> so, why was it so important that the angel explain to Joseph that Jesus is conceived by the Holy Spirit and not some earthly figure. <clears throat> Follow me on this line of thought. We as humans, we have this inherent sinful nature, right? We are a fallen race from the, from the Garden of Eden. And that follows us through our lineage, I suppose you could say. But Jesus being conceived by the Holy Spirit, that breaks that lineage. So when Jesus is born, he doesn't have that sinful nature. He's fully human, but he is fully God. And because of that, he is the perfect sacrifice later in his life. Because he is fully human and he is fully God, he came to be a sacrifice for each of us for the forgiveness of our sins. Joseph may not have understood that at the time, but Joseph obeyed. Every significant faith-filled act of obedience faces significant opposition. Do you think Joseph faced significant opposition when he and Mary went to the store and people saw him and they started and I will bet you that it wasn't so quiet. I'll bet there was outright disrespect and disapproval because people didn't understand. Let me, let, me, let me share a story with you. I have a couple of kids. All right. I have seven kids. <clears throat> when my wife and I were younger and the kids were younger, we would go to Walmart or go grocery shopping. And you can't leave the kids at home. So they're with us. And we're going through the store. We heard the most disrespectful and rude comments about us having so many kids. And I can only imagine in the culture in the first century when Mary and Joseph were out and about, the comments and the rudeness of people. That's a significant obstacle. Did it stop my wife and I from having more kids? I think we have nine at home right now. <laughs> if I counted correctly. I think we have nine. Did it stop Joseph from obeying? Did it cause him to change his mind? No. Because... Joseph was a righteous and faithful man. And he, I, I kind of, this is what I think. This isn't in the Bible. This is my opinion. I think when God told Joseph, do this, Joseph did it. 
And as things progressed, Joseph would say to himself, God told me to do this. I'm going to do it. God told me this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm going to do. Have you ever had a time in your life where you felt God telling you something and you say, okay, this is what I'm doing. And when you get under significant opposition or people are getting on you, well, why in the world are you doing that? You're not going to make money doing that. You're not going to make a living doing that. God has told me this. This is what I'm doing. God has told me this. This is what I'm doing. God has promised me he's going to take care of my family. I'm holding on to that promise. I am holding on to this is what God told me to do. This is what I'm going to do. Sometimes being obedient is hard. Sometimes we have significant opposition. But you know what? We have the Holy Spirit in our lives. The same Holy Spirit that conceived Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that gave Joseph the strength to endure that opposition, the same Holy Spirit that helped them when they had to escape to Egypt, the same Holy Spirit that was with Mary and Joseph when they lost the Son of God, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, He is living inside of us. He gives us the strength to endure that opposition. And all we have to do is obey. And I, I came across this. Don't worry when you face opposition for the obedience to God. Worry when you don't. Because Satan... He is the opposition. If you're not doing what God wants you to do, Satan doesn't care. Once you are obeying God, Satan is going to try and knock you off track. So when you don't have the opposition, maybe it's time we start thinking, maybe I need to start listening more. Listening to what God has to say. Praying about what's going on. Not saying we want opposition, don't get me wrong. But... Every faith-filled, obedient step is going to face significant opposition. We have no idea what God can do through one tiny moment of obedience. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Jesus, I thank you again. We want to be obedient to you and your word. As we go on in our life this week, we, I, I pray that you will open our minds, help us to open our minds and our hearts to hear your voice, your message. And I pray that we have the strength to be obedient the way Joseph was. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.